In artificial intelligence, it used to be a thing reserved for Hollywood. But now it's practically part of our everyday lives. And for meteorologists, AI is already in the forecasting space. In fact, today, a significant upgrade to Google's AI model. And Marissa, it involves the tropics. Of course it does. Yeah, <laughs> just in time for hurricane season, Fox Weather Hurricane Specialist Brian Norcross joining us. Brian, we've heard you have a very exciting announcement from Google and also you had an advisory role on this project. So tell us a little bit more about this new AI model, but also your role in bringing it to life. It really is a turning point, I think, this hurricane season. We've talked about it already, about how this is going to be the first hurricane season with mature AI models being part of our forecasting thinking. Uh, previously, we looked at them, but we didn't really understand them very well and, and certainly didn't have much of a track record. But now Google has taken a step, Google DeepMind, which is based in London, actually, taken a step to not just talk about the weather pattern, but actually take like 5,000 past hurricane advisories and data sets and put them into the model and make a special model for tropical storms and hurricanes. And the National Hurricane Center is actually part of this process now of evaluating it this year. And they asked me to be part of the evaluation process through the development of this uh, model that's just out today. And I can tell you it's been fascinating. The big takeaway for me uh, for me, is how fast these developments have happened. Things that used to take a year to develop with the old kind of models now can take a week or even days to change and update. And I saw that all in real time and gave my feedback on how they could uh, better uh, present it. So anyway, fascinating, guys, on on exactly this this process. And it's a big step for the Hurricane Center now to have it uh, in Miami, looking at it to evaluate it with the other models. And the track record has been fantastic. Um, let me show you. Let's uh, take a look at, at the Google product, which is called Weather Lab, which you can actually now uh, access if you want to take a look at it. It's kind of science-y based, but still it's interesting. This is Hurricane Otis going back to 2023. And this was on the day that it became a tropical storm. And this is one of the things that really impressed, I know, the folks at the Hurricane Center and me as well. There was a tropical storm. Well, the official forecast and all the traditional models had this thing dying out in this area offshore of Acapulco. did not look like a significant threat. But look at what the Google model was showed going back and looking at the data available at that time. The consensus was for it to come directly up into Acapulco. And then you can look over here and look at the strength. So here we are. These are 100 knots, so 100 knots, 115 miles per hour. Notice that it shows the possibility of it up near Category 4 strength, where the consensus of the traditional models was a tropical storm or a tropical depression and dying out. So this was a huge uh, indication of the possibility of success here. It didn't get this super high peak of Category 5, but it also didn't show it being a super weak storm. So this is showing a range of possibilities here, but you have to react to that when you see something that's wrong. Okay, let me show you another one here. This is from last year. This is Helene, of course. And another feature of this new model is that they, they generate a cone. Now, this is a new kind of cone, a different kind of cone, and we don't want anybody to get confused with the regular cones. We're still sticking with the regular system. This is all kind of looking to the future to experiment with what the possibilities are. This is a dynamic cone that changes size based on how confident the model is. So the blue one here, that's the Google model. The black one is actually what happened. You see the track is very, very accurate, and you see it really nailed Helene. Look, everything is right on top. The blue is right on top of the black uh, all the way along there on both the winds and the pressure. Now, having said all that, and it's an amazing success story on many of these storms, it's not always perfect. And so I want to be real upfront here. Here's uh, Milton. It shows it, it didn't quite get this track here. He brought it up in the just south of Tampa. I mean, all that was very, very good. I don't want to say this is bad. This is just not quite as perfect as Helene. But it did not get that big peak where it peaked up to Category 5 right there. You see, it got the second peak decently, 
but it didn't get the first one. So there's still more to do, but uh, they are in the, the, the fine tuning process. This is an experimental system called Weather Lab, and, and it's uh, the first hurricane season where we're going to really see what AI can do by this development of a tropical storm and hurricane specific AI model. Uh, that's that's what's new. And uh, it's really a pretty exciting that we're going to be able to look at this in parallel with all the things we normally look at through the hurricane season. The Hurricane Center is going to do that as well, guys. Well, um, I mean, AI is part of the conversation, Brian. It's it's so cool that you were part of that that phase of this development. Um, with when it comes to it, we we talked briefly too um, recently about how AI looks differently at the atmosphere than our traditional forecast models, and there is an element of historical data, but. Let's say that there's no reference point, this uh, novel event, if you will. If, if we haven't seen a similar storm back in history, will we be able to trust AI models? Well, so that's that's uh, part of the research to come. But the answer is maybe, <laughs> you know, people say, how does this work? And, and I say surprisingly well, because we don't really know what the innards are of it, exactly how it's working. But they know how to uh, to do improve the output by changing the input and changing what are called the weights in the model and, and some other parameters uh, within the model. So. The bigger the model, and this is the biggest one they've done for weather, the better uh, information they have, and the more it tends to think. It's sort of like having a bigger brain. So we have seen AI in the past uh, jump to conclusions and come to conclusions that were not in the data set. We saw that originally. Google did it spectacularly when they were playing this Chinese game called Go, which is kind of like a chess game that a lot of people in Asia play. Very, very, very complicated. And it came up with a novel move that had never been done before in any of the training sets. So uh, there is the capability to do that and the possibility to do that. But that's part of what we're going to learn here as we see this hurricane season in real time. I loved the discussion we had with Brian earlier in the week yeah. about AI models. I actually yeah. told the story about Go yeah. to somebody recently because mm -hmm. I was so blown away by what artificial intelligence was able to come up with. Um, but regardless, moving forward, Brian, you mentioned the National Hurricane Center. We depend so highly on their forecast when it comes to these tropical systems. We know that AI is not replacing our physics-based models, but certainly mm -hmm. could enhance these forecasts moving forward. Do you have, I guess... Um, if you had to put your best guess forward when we could see more permanent integration of these AI models into our forecast from, from the NHC, a timetable when you think that would even be? Well, traditionally, they put things in experimental mode for a couple of years and then, then figure out how to incorporate them. The thing is that AI moves so fast, we'll see uh, if they maybe move that up. If it looks like uh, when they do the experimentation, they say, okay, here's the AI model, here are the traditional models. Actually, the best we can do is average them. It might enhance what's called the consensus, which is really the average of the models is really what we look at anyway. A lot of work on that going on at Colorado State University in a research group uh, there to see exactly how th that possibility is going to play out. But we're really at the beginning of, I think, the real turning point of, of really being able to use these things and evaluate these things and see how we can combine them with the traditional ways and see if maybe they eventually will replace the traditional ways because they're much cheaper to run. The traditional models require these huge supercomputers and a lot of computing time to run all those equations. And uh, so there's a thought in people's mind that maybe we can get better, faster weather mm. forecasts by using this. But I also want to add, just for completeness, they still base this on what's called the data assimilation program at the European Center, the Euro model, where they gather all the data, the Euro model does, and then they deliver it to Google for this process and to other models, other AI models, by the way. And also they run their traditional Euro model on that data assimilation. Mm. So that's not being done by AI yet. That's still a big process. So there's, this is not by any means anything but the first significant step toward really using these things in practice. Yeah, that uh, it makes sense. And really with today, us highlighting this, Weather Lab 
it is available to the public. I'm understanding you correctly, right? This can be accessed by right. anybody? Yes, correct. Okay. Yes. It's, uh, I mean, I can tell you what the URL is. It's, uh, it's deepmind.google.com slash uh, science slash weather lab. Okay. Deepmind.google.com slash science slash weather lab. I feel like I'm getting cheat codes uh, or something. Can, uh, I know. Get in play with it there. <laughs> it, is just, it is just so truly fascinating yeah. where we are, and especially when it comes to forecasting. Here's the thing, Brian. Stephen and I are lucky because Stephen and I get to ask you questions yeah. whenever you join us, but we want to put <laughs> it out to the public. So if anybody has a question for Brian, there's no such thing as a bad question, right? No. Right, Brian? Um, but That's exactly specifically, correct. right? Yes. Specifically, though, when it comes to how artificial intelligence is shaping hurricane forecasting, mm -hmm. that's the QR code that you can scan. You can submit questions at foxweather.com slash connect and use the Ask Us tab as well. All of this, Brian will answer your, your questions to the best of his abilities. And let me tell you, his abilities are quite vast. Especially when <laughs> he's being asked to work on right? AI products. Right? So that's uh, Brian, quite a legacy. Yeah, we are very cool. lucky to have you in your insight, cool. Brian. Yeah. Thank you. We really appreciate it.